worked. And David sitting in the bathtub alone, naked. <laughs> He's drinking champagne. It's like 8 o'clock in the morning, of course. He's such a lush. Good thing, by the way, good thing I am like a great role model for kids, because he is not. <laughs> and uh, and she's, and Damon says, you know, hey, give me some more champagne. She goes, go get it yourself. So Damon stands up. And he's wearing nothing except suds. And we did this funny thing, sort of like Austin Powers, where I'm walking through the room, and as he's nakedly walking through the room, they're shooting like, there's a globe, and then there's a candle, and there's like all these cool things. And then after that scene was actually yelled, cut, you know, movie sets, TV sets, they're like families. You're with these people for years, but you know, this is year three, so I've been with these people for two years of my life. And it's all the grits and electrics and these like macho dudes, you know, who are my brothers, but I'm walking around completely covered in soap. And that's it. And I walk off the stage and, and I I go, I walk up to my grip and I was like, hey boys! And I go give them a hug. Literally they scramble. I cleared the set. Every guy ran off. And the only people sitting there were the women going, do I run, or do, like, what do I do? <laughs> but it was very disarming, and I'm really bonded to those people for life. Um, note the, how sort of um, accidentally self sort of loving that is. Yo, the best scene I did was with myself. <laughs> It wasn't, that was an unintended consequence of that story, so. Sorry. Thank you. Hey, by the way, man, it's cool. It takes balls to stand up in front of almost 5,000 people and ask a question. Stand especially to a babbling idiot. I would... I would, uh... <laughs> I really would have liked to have been the crow, but David ain't the crow. <laughs> we used to do all those fun jump scares and shit, and I don't know why we don't anymore. I asked one of the writers the other day, and he goes, I know, I miss them too. <laughs> They're just gone. Look at the crow flying in the room and scared the shit out of everybody. I like watching them. Yeah! <laughs> um, there are great characters on the show. Um, Stefan is a very beautifully written, beautifully acted, crafted character. Um, Ian the President! Ian the President? I don't wish that job on anyone. <laughs> I mean, look, whatever you believe, man, whatever side you're on, if you watch an American president come into office, they're all clean cut, and they're super proud, and they're really happy that they're one, and you know, now president. Cut to three years later, and you see that, and you go, wow, that's a really stressful job. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I, I, I actually, I don't think I want to be any other character other than Damon. You, you guys have uh, lifted me up so much and really made this character um, amazing. And, and the, this group, with this team, is incredible, man. There's another woman, by the way, you should really thank for Damon. My acting coach. There's a woman named Ivana Chubbuck. And she is along with Kevin and Julie and the writers of the studio network allowing me to do this stuff. She's a really giant part of why Damon is Damon. Um, so I always have to thank her. It ain't just me. I would love to take credit for all this, but it's a lot of crew and writing and directing and a lot of trouble and it's really like maybe a quarter of me, so I can't take credit for it all. Are you yawning? Am I putting you to sleep? Woman is yawning. <laughs> Guys, everything changes. <laughs> and the
the beauty of it is, is wherever you stand, first and foremost, Elaine is not really gone. What? It's not an episode where you don't hear her name 25 times. <laughs> where you don't see the box that she's in. Uh, she's very much there in her presence. But this is Misty Falls, not Elaine Gilbert. And it's, I gotta tell you, the stories are really awesome. And the, they are. That character gave a lot and was really a center um, and a focal point of the story for, for quite a while. And this is the evolution of this story. Um, this is about a town. This is about two brothers that have been through a lot. And about a very, very powerful, beautiful cast of people who are going through a lot of shit. Who are trying to just keep together and survive as a unit. And it's you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. You know, what you hope is that a TV show is about the story and serving the master of the story. So I hope you don't polarize the show by you know it's a real it's a real thing right now in the world. This whole shipping thing. And, yeah, but it's woo! But the reality of it is, is that it's also become extremely negative. And it's really unnecessary. Their characters in a TV show. It's about enjoying the experience. It's a great, it's cool to love characters, but when you start attaching them to real human beings that are off the screen, it just becomes a little intense. So I I beg of you to reconsider um, that polarization and actually just enjoy the story for what it is. Um, Paul and I in this town. Um, Paul and I in this town are working our asses off. And it's a lot of fun. And I think you're going to enjoy season seven of the show. We're going to work really, really hard. Well.